So I think one is, um, like Rose, when you were talking, <clears throat> when you think of the, the woman, the girl, the person, period, you can think of someone as an input. So uh, women and girls, boys needing access to the knowledge, to the technology, to the skills, education, et cetera, and the kind of pathway to be the technologist. That's one way that some people will tend to think. The other is they'll tend to think of the, the woman or the girl child as the user. So that's a second pathway that I think, and that's a lot of what you're pointing out, the woman as the user of the technology. I think there's a third scenario, but that's not what we're gonna talk about too much, which is women as enablers. So to the before lunch talking about, do you have ministers, politicians, decision makers who are technology literate who can understand and represent the complete community when they're talking about technology-enabled cities. So if you were to set up the commission for smart cities, uh, for the Dar es Salaam smart city, would they actually understand these issues of inclusion or exclusion for women and girls in making decisions as well as as users, as well as kind of providers? So, but to your example, now to your example, I think there are a ton that would empower this woman uh, that you gave the example of, all the way from even their basic technologies. I know my own wife worries about our children when they're at school, and she wants to know an update. And if you could get a regular update about your child at school, a picture just to see that, look, they're there smiling, and they're happy that gives her a sense of peace and relaxation that helps her go on with the day. Um, little basic things like that, thinking about how you get the mobile payment access, the access to the money, to the woman, so that she can use her phone to pay for that smart card that's gonna help her get onto the BRT. That's, a, I think, a very clear example of where, I don't know if BRT has looked at the access to money and mobile money f related to their users getting on, onto the bus. Caroline, what are some of the barriers for young women in technology, in particular when you're looking at building smart solutions? Yeah, okay. So. Um, Allow me to start with a few statistics. Um, in the world, um, we have 45% of people who know about ICT, but out of that, only 10% is women. You see that. And in the software development field, we only have 25% of the women involved in software development. And as we go to the smart city, it's something which need to be inclusive, which need to have all genders because Women face different problems, and some problems are not faced by men. So if we don't have uh, more women developing those solutions, developing the next uh, solutions or the next applications which we're going to use in our smart city, then it's a big problem. Yeah, in my incubator, I have um, many girls, and I have experienced and I have seen like the problems they, they face as young girls who are learning how to code, who are in ICT, and one of them is that um, the confidence, you know, from home, you know, like uh, because of the previous stereotype of which sometimes in some families is still there, so it is difficult for a girl to really, like, uh, to really develop something and and she goes out there like I've developed this. Because I experienced, for example, Modesta, when she's going to different schools to implement her system, you find they're like, are you the one who did this? Can you really do this? You know, she has to prove, she has to show them, and she has to show, like, open her website, hey, this is me, and uh, because it is written, they are the founder, the what, everything. So, but if it was someone else, I think it would have been different. And also, um, the time, you know, they wake up in the morning, they have to do dishes, they have to do a lot of chores, and then they have to come to the lab to learn. Meanwhile, the boy just comes, meanwhile most of the boys come early than the girls, yeah. And even if you're to count the time, how many, like the, how many, like how, how many hours the girls spend at the hub, they can even go up to seven and there's no problem. But when the girl does that and she reaches at home, it's a very big problem. And that's trust also from the parents. So, and also there's this thing like, yeah, the girls are, uh, we are always told to be perfect most of the time, you know. When you make a mistake or when you, you do something, you, you're not supposed to, you know, we don't have a room to make mistakes and move on. So that one is also a barrier, right? yeah. So for those of you who don't know Modesta, are you in the room? Just stand up really quickly. Modesta has a startup called Our Cry. She's 17 years old. 
and her system reports harassment on buses, on public buses. Rose, what, when you're working with the girls from Apps and um, She Codes for Change, what are you looking at as some of the solutions that they're developing and how can we have a more gender inclusive ecosystem? Okay, so as she called for change, um, like I said, what we're looking at is empowering the girls to do this for themselves. So uh, one of the things that I've been saying over and over is that, as you've said, there's a woman, you've taken us through the journey. This woman is doing a lot. She's facing a lot of barriers. Um, and it's good that you've come out here and said it for everybody to hear, even they know the today and tomorrow's innovators, so that you understand that kind of journey. But for us, we feel like this is uh, better for them because once we bring them in, once we inspire them, maybe not to be software developers, just to be users of technology, just to be uh, the people who can now say, well, there is a problem here right now, and I know that probably technology can solve this, then they'll go out and explain to somebody else who can do the coding. So uh, we feel like the women themselves should be empowered in this area so that they understand what is technology, that it's not out there, it's here today, it's mobile money, it's, um, it's simple things that can help them through the day. Just like uh, David just said, that it could be a picture that you receive from school. Um, it could be something that helps you to order water from wherever that is being fished to where you are, instead of you carrying your child and go and fetch water. So it could be things, small things like those, but then they go a long way to help that, that woman. So for us, it's... Uh, it's more of that. If they want to grow and be the, so, the new software developers, well and good, and that's why we're thinking about the hub. But then, to start with, they need to understand what is technology, what, how can you use your phone, how can you use your computers, and, and it's a journey, it's a journey. Yesterday, I was sitting um, at the gathering, which is FSDT, and they were talking about the journey for mobile money. It's been a long journey to explaining people how money can jump from your phone to the next phone, and that education still continues today. You go to uh, Sumbawanga, you start explaining this to people, it still doesn't get it into their minds how you send out money. So small things like this are the things that we actually need to get us to the next step. Any questions? So here's the thing, I know like maybe 50% of, one question? Two questions. One and a half. Okay. I know some of you in the room, so if you don't ask a question, I will call on you. So now is not the time to look down. Anyone have a question or a comment? Something that either Caroline or Rose or David said today that you're thinking, wait a minute, here's an idea that I have. Maybe you just share your idea and we see if there's anyone in the room who's willing to partner with you. Emmanuel Evans, I see your name. I see your hand up. Can we get Emmanuel a mic? Either a question or a comment. Hi. Um, my name is Emmanuel Evans, and I have one question. Um, I think any, any of you can choose to answer. Um, so. The, the, the aspect that uh, Sierra is talking here is how do you enable, like how do you help um, the average woman who have a featured phone or don't, doesn't have a, a knowledge of using a smartphone or to utilize the technology properly. So for example, for instance, uh, you have someone who live uh, very far from this uh, technology like um, let's say Shinyanga or Kahama and then they have access to a smartphone and they really don't know how to use it. For instance, my mom doesn't know how to use WhatsApp. She always calls me like, hey, son, I need to, to open WhatsApp. How do you open that? Um, so how do you, how do you help someone like that so that they can utilize the technology well, like for payment, as you said, uh, for communication? So how do you, how, what's the plan do you guys think that best, better work for that? Thanks. 
Uh, okay, thank you so much. Um, for me, I would do say that all of us here, we know how to use those tools. We should be ambassadors to those people who don't know, like is your mom. It's a shame at this time she doesn't know because you know already. So you're supposed to have taught that, you're supposed to have taught your mom. So if we take an initiative, we are all looking forward to the smart city and we all understand what it needs. Let's not leave this job for someone. Let's do it ourselves. If you know something, share and volunteer to teach. Like when I was starting Apps and Girls, actually, I was teaching women in my living room how to use the free internet they were getting on the mobile phones. It's something which really impacted very many women. And recently I met one of them. She was working at a hospital and she was very excited. And she was like, I always see you on Facebook and I'm following you. I was like, oh my God, you continued with <laughs> Facebook. And she was like, yes. And even it helped me to increase my job because right now I'm using a computer in, she was like a cashier. And now she has, she's like, I, am, I was comfortable. And that's what made me competent to be able to stay on this job when they brought the accounting system. So it's something which creates change. It may be small for now, but it creates good, great impact to that specific woman. Can I just share you uh, a real situation? So, um, uh, you know, most of you know me by the startup at Greenfo, and we're talking about using a mobile or a computer in agriculture. Uh, so, when I started this venture, I thought that it's a very easy thing to do. But uh, I'll tell you that I've spent a lot of time here in Dar es Salaam teaching almost 200 women and, and men, but mostly women, on how to actually access internet on a mobile phone. They have a smartphone, but then all they do is calling. So we, I mean, that will tell you how big a problem is, and that is here in Dar es Salaam. So go figure. Thank you very much, Caroline, David, and Rose. And I think we're all in agreement that if you go home with one thing today, is that you're thinking about what you're building, who is it for, and how are you going to help us as a country move towards smart solutions? Thank you very much. <laughs> now, I think in one way or another, me and her, we have some beef. I'm sorry, Catherine. Now, I, we know, we know, you guys were supposed to talk a bit longer. Hello? Yeah. You guys were supposed to talk a bit longer, but unfortunately, time is on our side. Anyway, that was a great discussion. Thank you very much, Catherine. Thank you very much, Rose. Thank you very much, Caroline and David. A round of applause. That was nice.